Hello, hello, I'm back. How are we all? Look at my lovely messy table. I might need a clean piece of paper by tomorrow. What do you think? Oh, God, I can hear myself on the laptop. Hang on a minute. There we go. So welcome back, guys. Um, another live, fun little Facebook class for you. Uh, hey, Kelly. Hey, Deb. How is everybody's afternoon going? Are we all having a pretty good cruisy day? Um, I hope that you are all happy and healthy where you are in your homes. If you are in lockdown, hello, Linny. Hey, Monica. All right, I'm not going to go through and do a roll call. Nobody needs to hear that. Um, so what I want to do today is, because there's quite a few things on special as part of the great international craft show um i thought i would talk to you today about lindy sprays uh stencil girl stencils they are the two companies that i am working with this year and um my yeah really two of my favorite products so what i thought i would do is a bit of a scrapbook layout showing you some information on how to use those things so First and foremost, um, Lindy's products are on special for today only at 15% off. So that includes Lindy's sprays, which is what I am going to be using today in our live Facebook. So we have got, this is what a Lindy spray looks like. Jess, can you grab one that has not been activated, please? So with the Lindy sprays, um, like the Magicals, they are a pigment dye based product. So this is, uh, they're an awesome spray. When you purchase a spray, they come in a empty container with no liquid in it that looks something along these lines. Uh, the powder just sitting in the bottom there, as you can see, and it's something that you need to activate. So what you do is you read the instructions on the side or the little card that's in with your order and it says add warm water to the fill line, let sit for 10 minutes, shake before each use and enjoy. So it's kind of like jelly crystals, you have to get them to, to work or dissolve them before you use them. So here in Adelaide I use filtered tap water, put it in the kettle, boil it just to get a little bit more rubbish out of it and then I will wait till it comes down to room temperature, put it in here and there's a fill line there, shake it and we're good to go. So today I'm going to be using a variety of different colours in the sprays. Um, I was mentioning in my last video, on the Natalie May community, cr creative community, we have got a, there's like a, a three hour live Facebook I did a couple of weeks ago where you can see a full information session about Lindy's. Have a look through some work that I've done before, etc. Instagram, you can follow me, Happy Dax, uh, Natalie May Scrapbooking. Um, another little thing, I mentioned this yesterday. The we're about to release the packages that, or the package that's available for our scrapbooking retreat uh, here in Adelaide, planned for May twenty to twenty two, twenty twenty two. This is going to be here in Adelaide, in the Adelaide Hills, and we're going to have a fantastic weekend, and it's gonna be awesome. All right, Stencil Girl. So Stencil Girl is a fantastic company that I absolutely love. And Stencil Girl have been around for years and years and years, just like Lindy's, and they create stencils Stencils are created by artists for crafty people like us. So what I want to do, I've got a great range of Stencil Girl 9 by 12 stencils, 6 by 6 and 4 by 4 stencils in the online store. Under the stencils heading, you will find the uh, tab for Stencil Girl. You'll find a huge range of other brands there as well that we sell. But everybody knows that Stencil Girl is my favourite. So what I want to do is I'm going to do a scrapbook page using a word stencil. The cardstock that I've chosen to use is Marshmallow cardstock. It is a mixed media cardstock, okay? So it is a, 
um, a slightly heavier duty. It's a really nice cardstock. I do have quite a few different cardstocks available uh, on online. So, all right. So what I want to do is I want to use modeling paste and create a line that goes across like that. So I have got some modeling paste here. So modeling paste is something that is going to dry giving me body. You can see that it's quite thick, quite heavy. Um, it is a, a modeling paste, essentially. So what I wanna do, you can see that that's the size of my stencil, so I need to do it in two different blocks. So I'm gonna pop, I don't know, that much down there, get it on, and then it's kind of like thick peanut butter. I'm going to spread it on so that it has got some body. I want it to have some body behind it, some thickness, okay? I want it to not be thin. This technique doesn't work great with gesso, although you can do it with a heavy gesso, like the 13 Arts one. Uh, but the modeling paste or texture paste is designed to do this. So you can see that I'm just pasting up and down like that. And when I peel my stencil back, I have got those words left there. So now I wanna do this side as well. And I'm just going to put my modeling paste on my catalyst tool and I'm just holding up as you can see the edge of the stencil there so that it doesn't drop down onto that edge because I don't want it to leave a mark so just putting it on like thick peanut butter and there we go so I've got a couple of bits here that I don't love, so I'm just going to wipe that off with my fingernail, as you do. And you can see, can you see? You can, you can see that it's, it's dried with texture. And now you use your heat gun to dry that off. So, before I dry it off, I pull out an art journal. Here's one I did before. Um, I'm going to pull out my art journal and I'm going to I'm going to transfer that excess modeling paste that is still on my stencil into my art journal before wiping it off with a baby wipe. Okay, so just like that so then I'm not wasting it and I'm actually I'm, I'm creating starting to create a a project ready for my art journal all right so cleaned off I didn't add any more hey Jessica can you go and run that in some water for me please yeah. all right so then I'm just going to pop that down on the floor to dry and we are good to go so I love that modeling paste will will dry with body and leave that that um, print behind. So there's a great range of stencils available and yeah heaps and heaps to choose from. So pop that aside. Clean off my table. So here's one I prepared earlier. Ta da! So that's totally dry now. You can see that print and that texture on there. And I just realized I don't have my light on. Sorry guys. It's gonna give it a little bit more light there. Okay, so my thinking today is that I wanna add some color across this bit here. And I want to use a few stamps as well. I've pulled off the shelf some uh, Vicky Booten Storyteller embellishments. This is an awesome little pack, and there's some cute things on here that I want to I want to use. So I've got those. I've also pulled aside some um, just just use the scrubbing brush, love. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, 
So I want to use some of these. I've pulled aside some Pink Fresh gems to use as well. So first of all, let's have a look at the colours that I have chosen. I've had a look at the back of the Vicky Booten pack here and pulled out some sprays that I've got in similar sort of colours. So rather than spraying and testing it all first, I'm going to use the sprays in a slightly different way today. I'm going to use them with my paintbrush. Um, but before I start, I just want to test that the colours are going to work and I just do it the, the lazy way by pulling out the nozzle and just testing them onto here. I like to do this because I need to visually see what, what I've got before I use it. If I decide to spray it, I can do that, but I just want to do it in a small little area. Um, so I want some, some earthier colours. I've got some blue greens going on here as well. That's quite bright. I'll keep that one in mind. Uh, I've also got another aqua here because those papers have got that little bit of an aqua green sort of base to it. So I just want to be aware. So the sprays are like the magicals. They are. They have a permanency to them that you you don't get from any any other sort of brands. I know Dilutions do an amazing dye spray, and I do love those. But I do love these better because these have the shimmer to them and they have since the since the get-go. So these are the sort of colours I want to go with. Um, the other thing I want to do, I might just take these out of the pack and let's see what we have. I have got I love these storyteller, um, love this storyteller collection. The colours are right up my alley. The way that I've uh, lay well, play with ephemera when I have a, a set is crack them out and lay them all out and group them on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So I can see exactly what I have got before I start. So I put all the tickets together, all of these sort of cards together. You can see that this is a, a super full pack. It's got some um, like some note bits here. I love that tag. That's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So this is why you check now. I love the tickets. The ruler. And I start grouping things together at this point. So all the big pieces I'll put together. The tags. See some open frames. And I'm certainly not going to use all of these pieces. But I am going to... I've got lots in this pack and then there's more and there's more that I can't get open okay so this has also got the foiled bannery bits in it as well bannery bits you know banners more tickets more words, more tickets. Good things come to those who hustle. Damn right it does. Oh, I love that. It's got a nice little gold sheen to it. So that goes in the frame section. Oh, there's a feather. Oh, hello, little butterfly. That's a bit pretty. So there's, I can now actually see the sort of colours that I want to be working with and what colours I can pull um, from, my, from my Lindy sprays. And I think the colours that I've chosen here are pretty accurate. I've got a bit of an idea. So I'm going to pop that aside and pull out my, here's one I prepared earlier, sort of spray. So with the colours that I've chosen, I want to start with some brown tones. I love the craft undertone to this. Here is my pretend photograph which is four by four size. Um, I haven't taken, bought, the, uh, bought in the, um, bought in my photos from home yet after moving into the studio. So uh, I really, really need to get into doing that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with the moon shadow sprays. So moon shadow sprays are awesome. Moon shadow sprays, are a vintage coloured spray 
with a coloured shimmer. So, for example, I have got Buccaneer Bay Blue here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see on the bottom there, that blue shimmer. You can certainly see it with that one. All right. So, Buccaneer Bay Blue. So, when you give it a really good shake, that shimmer moves around and it will... That's the other one I want. And it will, um, that shimmer will come out when we, when we spray. The other colour I want to use is Golden Doubloons in a Moon Shadow Mist. So I've got that vintage sepia ink with a coloured gold shimmer, okay? So the vintage colour ink is kind of going to give me that look that I'm after, that more vintage sort of style, okay? Um, I think that I might start off with spraying first. I really haven't thought this layout through. I've got no idea what I want to do. So what I thought... Now, well, if, I, if I spray through this area here, I want to keep some white up here. So I'm going to use some paper towel to mask off an area. And I'm going to start with getting a bit of a spray on across the top. Um, it's always a really good idea to, to spray first onto something else to see, A, does your nozzle work? If it clogs up, I find that the little bit of um, shimmer gets stuck in that little hole there and I get a pin in there and clean it off. So let's test out the Buccaneer Bay Blue. Make sure it's the colour that I want. Oh, look, there we go. It is. It's got a nice little blue shimmer to it. You can see that, can't you? Can you? Yes, you can. So making sure that they spray fine beforehand, okay? So let's get into it. So I'm going to come in super close because I don't want it to be a big spray. I want it to be a, sorry, I want it to be quite a wet spray. And now I'm going to add some of this Buccaneer Bay Blue as well. And it's creating this really earthy, Sort of background and I'm very quickly going to grab it and uh, get my wet paintbrush which I was almost ready with and just spread these bits around and you can see where it's pulling into my stenciling so what I love is that it's going to dry just a freckle lighter and I'm going to dry that off nice and quickly with my heat tool so I highly recommend having a heat tool when you're doing this. I'm watching. I didn't overspray it because I didn't want to have liquid going somewhere where I can't control. <laughs> Tina, love your thought process. Thanks, Tina. There is no thought process. I kind of wing it. You know that. You know that I just kind of go, I wonder how bad it could go. That's my thing. Um, creating with confidence is something that I bang on about a fair bit. I think it's really, really important to, to create confidently and create for yourself. I, can, I can't stress that enough. Um, I'm not creating to impress you. I'm creating to show, you know, to create a scrapbook layout, but to also record a memory and to create something fun that I absolutely love. So it's all about doing that. So what I'm going to do next is I want to add a little bit of colour. So I can see that it's not 100% dry and I'm okay with that. But with these die cuts that I pulled out before, so here's this aqua that I want to kind of pull in and some darker brown that I would brown that I want to pull in as well so looking at my swatch sheet that I did earlier that's definitely too green I don't want to use that one and no I can't remember which one it was so I'm going to just do a little tester again oh that one works I like that and I like the depth of this first one that I used time travel teal let's have a look at that one Yep, that'll work. That's got a bit of depth behind it. And I might keep this aqua 
out of the equation. So instead of using it in a spray form now, I'm going to go, well, let's use it in a paint with a paintbrush. So then I've got a bit more control over where the color's going. So I'm going to use my, my brush and it's quite a, a, a big brush, a bit of a juicy brush. And I'm just going to sprinkle and tap some of this color onto my page. Okay, and I'm going to mix up these three different colors to, to build it up to something that I am happy with. All right. So the Time Travel Teal is a shimmer spray. That The last one that I just used then was a flat spray with no shimmer. And these sprays, there's a few of them available online uh, on, on the website as single sprays. But the best value for money is to buy them in a set. You can buy them in a set of five. All right, I like where this is going, except for that bit. Right, you got the advantage while it's wet that you can tone it back. I don't love that. So just by putting my, you know, sopping up a little bit with my paper towel, I can tone that back. And before I add that last deep colour, that deeper teal, I'm going to just take a little bit of wetness out of it, okay? And I'll bring this up to camera in a minute so you can see exactly what I've done. But what you'll find is that the colour is pooling really nicely in and around the stenciling. You can see that I'm not putting anything in the middle because that's where my photo is going to go. I'm just building up my background, okay? I'm not thinking about my total finished piece just yet, but I'm just building up my background. So this is Galactic Teal. This is one that is a little bit... Um, darker and rather than using a paintbrush i'm just going to take the nozzle take the lid off and use it like this and i'm also going to spread some with the nozzle on the edges okay like that and now it's starting to get a little bit more depth to it and that is what i love so i can just swipe the nozzle over the top and this can work really well if you have sprays that are blocked up as well. A lot of people do. It's a common thing. Um, with Lindy's, if I get some that are blocked up, what I do is I will soak my spray. I'll pull it apart, pull off the nozzle, pull off this bit here, and I will soak it in, the, in some boiling water in a coffee cup for an hour or so just to release some of the mica that's built up because that's what's happened. The mica has built up. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit now up into my white area just for balance, and then I will dry it off before I do the next step, which I don't know what it's gonna be yet, so just chat amongst yourselves. While I have a bit of a think through. might add a bit of stamping next I think so the mitt the marshmallow cardstock is just a it is is a it's got a higher price point than normal cardstock but if I was to use like the lower cost Kazercraft card for example it's too absorbent this has got more body to it it is a much better quality product without a doubt Marshmallow cardstock is the one that I use the most when creating layouts. If you go back and watch any of my YouTubes, you will find that most of them, most of the layouts are done on marshmallow cardstock. And you'll notice I'm just drying from underneath. That's because I have used a lot of liquid, so I want to make sure that it has dried all the way through. So there's no reason why these beautiful browns and 
Aquas don't work together. Brown's a lovely neutral tone. All right. So I'm going to bring this up to camera. So hopefully you can see some of this shimmer. that is pooling in and amongst those words. Um, oh, that's, it's just not quite capturing it right on camera, but it's bloody awesome. Oh, there's another one for the swear jar. No, I don't think torching is going to make much of a difference, <laughs> Jess. Oh, you, they, you can catch it from the window light. So, all right. So that looks pretty, pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, the... Other cool things, so let's just say, for example, in about six minutes' time, that stencil that I've used is sold out because that's a thing. Um, some of the other stencils that might look fantastic, I just pulled a couple just to show you some that might work. This one here ha is, is an awesome print. Uh, it is It's by an awesome designer by the late Christy Taylor, who uh, some of you may or may not know uh, is a, was a very, very talented American lady and she actually passed away from COVID, COVID earlier this year. Um, but this one would look great to join that up in the middle or have that as a um, mark in the middle. We had some, some flowers. There's so many really, really cool designs, something like that. We have got these really awesome circular ones that would look fantastic that you could go there and there. Lots of different words, lots of different marks. Uh, this one here is another one that would look awesome. I don't know if that's showing up very well. There we go. Um, but there's some really cool stencils that Stencil Girl has designed. I quite often get asked as well, uh, how, do you, how do you store your stencils, Natalie? What I do, um, Jessica, can you grab the stencil storage, uh, Avery L stencil storage off the floor, please? No, in there, on the shelf. Um, I use these big bags. These are fantastic. So this one holds my 9 by 12s and this is like a 13 by 13 size. The is there a smaller size still? I didn't think I could. Can I you? Think I could and then I've got these little size here. This is Avery L, and this is the size that I use for my smaller stencils. My six by six and my four by fours go in this. So that's the small one that we have, and this ah. is the big one. So that's there you 12 go. By 12. And that holds a uh, twelve by twelve. So that's fantastic. These are this is a thirteen by thirteen. So that will actually hold papers as well. You'll find these in the tools section online. I've got them in stock because it is what I use all the time for my personal storage. All right, so that has dried off. Winning. I might pop a little bit of stamping on now. I have got a Paper Artsy stamp here and I'm going to use black archival ink so paper artsy uh, are actually on special at the moment as well so I always test on my background piece of paper first and this one here is just dots love me a pattern an easy pattern and I'm not using a block because I don't want it to be perfect it's just adding a little texture to the background of my page and a little bit of depth and again I'll bring it up to camera in a moment and show you I don't want it edge to edge I just want it as a bit of a mark on my page because I've got all this other cool stuff going on too remember a little bit of stenciling oh sorry a little bit of stamping up there a little bit up there A little bit down there and that is it that's all I'm going to do so I am an avid collector of background stamps and every amount of me wants to use those but I'm not going to not today uh, all right so that's coming up looking quite nice 
oh, on camera at the moment, you can see that gold shimmer all the way down through there. That's just shimmer. That's the shine showing through. That's not an extra color that I've put on. <laughs> um, all right, so next thing I want to do, let's start laying out the page. My white area is important. It, it's, it's all about balance. So my photo is going to go smack bang in the middle. I could quite easily just leave it like that. But I want to pull out some of these lovely little elements that I opened up out of the packet earlier. And have a bit of a think now about it. Now, I do love this. This is kind of cool. And I love the, the gold, even though that I've covered some up. So I could quite easily take that up there. The reason being is that side on my layout is where I've got that splatter going. So that going up there will work. But I need to put some solid elements behind it first. So I'm going to grab a bingo card in there. And I don't want to have the craft elements too close to my layout because they disappear. So I need to slide something underneath that again. Okay, so it might be, I've got this long one here. There we go. Now we've got a bit of movement. Now it's standing out a little. Um, ooh. Kind of like the frame. And I like these here as well, but I don't want it as, as two. So I'm going to be a little bit brutal and I'm going to cut that one off. And I'm going to use this bit. I'm going to slide that in there. So this is how I build a scrapbook page. So you can kind of see what's going on. I've got a few little elements here. Uh, I need a pop of colour. So I've got these tickets. All right, I'm going to come back and add these smaller elements later and this piece. Uh, when I put everything together, I am a sucker for some glue with a scrapbook page. So I use my magic glue. Uh, some people love magic glue. Some people don't love magic glue. This is um, the adhesive that I bring in from Poland. Um, hey, Jess, could you grab me, please? In my scrapbook trolley, you'll need to walk a bit faster. Um, Skinny drawers, third one down. I think there's some uh, cardboard offcuts. Yeah. Can you just bring me one, please? Um, what I'm going to do is instead of mounting my photo with foam tape, I am going to use a piece of cardboard. Thanks, babe. Hey, and while Jessica is standing here next to me, um, for those of you who sent Jess a birthday card, thank you, everyone. It was amazing i love seeing everything that you guys made and i'm so thankful there you go so a lot of um a lot of you sent jessica a 18th birthday card and i'm very grateful for all of your creativity so that i'm going to stick like that cool so now from here i'm going to work backwards so i'm going to pop some glue on here and i don't over glue i like the ability I like to have the ability to be able to move it all. And I think that's really important. I think that having that um, maneuverability and just a small amount of adhesive. I mean, hey, unless you're sending it to Argentina by pigeon, it doesn't particularly need a whole lot of adhesive on it. And the other cool thing is um, 
If you're using good quality products, they're gonna do the job. If you're using shitty products, sorry, if you're using not great quality products, then of course, you're going to need something better. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Right, so now I can put a big dob of glue in the middle here. So what the piece of cardboard does, it's just gonna give me that height and something that I can then build on. Um, all right, so that goes there. Pop that back on there for a second. Now, I just have to stand up because I can't see if it's straight because I'm sitting on a weird angle. That works for me. All right, so now I'm just going to grab this. And these slide in under here. I don't quite know sometimes where my thought process is when I create scrapbook layouts. I just kind of wing it. But I always work from my photo down because everything has to be about the photo because that is what we are creating for. Now, because I've stuck that down, I'm going to cut that corner off. Sometimes we forget that this is about the photos, not all the other stuff on the page. I mean, you do like the pretty stuff, let's be honest. But it is about the photos. The whole thing has got to be about the photos. All right, secure that down to my page. And that's crooked and because it's glue and it hasn't totally dried yet I have that maneuverability okay good oh I know that this guy here is going to sit up here in a minute but what else can I add I love that butterfly that's nice it's a lot it's a lot, right? Because it's got a metallic. So it's about balance. I need to balance this metallic with something else down here in metallic. I've loved that, but it's just too big. Half of it looks good. Is it a crime to cut that in half? Let's see what else we've got. Oh, here we go. This is perfect. Beautiful day. Let's get some other colours in here. Oh, I love that. I'm just going to whack that in there because I love it so much. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, there's some pops of pink in this butterfly. I could quite easily add a few pops of pink as well. Do I want to do that? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Hey, this is cool too. And because I haven't used double tape, I can slide and tuck. Actually, that's not bad there. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of adhesive on the side. So don't forget today, guys, You all, everybody goes in the drawer. Everybody who orders today goes into the drawer to win the $80 or approximately $80 prize pack. Um, I've been gifted a lot of amazing product samples, new release items, things like that recently, and I want to pass it to you. So we figured the best way to do it was to offer you a, a prize for ordering, offer you a, a little incentive, not that you need any help, 
Um, this is disappearing onto here, onto the background. So like I said before, I need to separate it. So I need to slide a little bit of something in under that. Not much, doesn't need to be much, but All right, so that's too thick, so I need to, I can cut it up. I'm very capable of cutting that up. Right, there we go. Mm -hmm. So who is creating at the moment? Is anybody creating <laughs> uh, rather than sitting around and watching or are you all just sitting around and watching me? I can't, I can't pick that up. I don't, I've got a broken fingernail here and it is just the worst. Oh, there we go. I made that hard, didn't I? That's all I wanted it to be, is just that. Ugh. Okay. Done, done, done. Loving this. Let's stick this guy up here down. 45 minutes. Okay, we're doing well. So because this is on vellum, I want to go with the less is best aspect for adhesives. I don't want to use too much. So, um, hey, what are you doing, Jess? Can you make some more noise over there, babe? Sorry, I'm trying to All right. If you can't find something, pop it aside till I'm finished filming, please, sweater. Sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little, just some just some small dots of adhesive under here because adhesive on vellum tends to buckle a little. So, less is best is... The, uh, the best way to go. I know that the butterfly is going to cover it up, but that's okay. Foam tape. So the foam tape I'm going to use is, I'm going to use my standard foam tape and I'm going to just cut a thin bit for the body of the butterfly. And again, because it is sheer, it's a sheer butterfly, um, totally trans almost transparent. You don't want a big piece under there or it's going to show through. And that's probably a bit too big, but let's commit to it. Bam. So the wings are up. The words are there. I need, some, I need a title for my page. Uh, so my title is going to be one of these little embellishments or alternatively, I got a massive delivery of thickers in this week. Uh, so uh, you all know how much I love thickers. Here's my, uh, here is an eighth of my, my thicker collection. So, I love thickers and alphabets that can give me words. So if I'm choosing something, I think, right, okay, um, what can I add to my page? What sort of words are going to work? And then I don't have to get in too deep into trying to find the right title. Uh, so there is a, a huge amount. Hey, Jess, would you grab some of the gold ones off the shelf for me, please? Um, they're... There's quite a few gold thickers that came in a couple of days ago. That would work perfectly for this layout. And I'm just wondering if I have one here that is open that I can use or do I need to crack one open out of the packet? Um, but, but they're great. They're great title starters. So, for example, if I wanted, I couldn't think of a, a sentiment, I've got a good start here. So, these are a quite inexpensive option. So, I've got, I could say celebrate and say celebrate every, and, uh, every day in other letters. Um, 
Best friend. These could be photos of, of best friends. So excellent ideas there. We have got Every Moment Matters. Oh, I love that. Uh, it could be a family photograph and you can use family time. You are loved. Love lives here. I make a point of, of bringing in alphas and thickers that are quite universal. Something that you can use again and again and again. Oh, these are pretty. So these have got these little decorative elements on them as well. Oh, bonus butterfly. Um, roses as well. So how much are the thickers, Jess? Oh, uh, I'll check. Why don't you check for me? So the gold would look fantastic on this layout. But I, I don't know about opening a packet just for this layout. So um, I might just go with... About $9 each. There you go. Inexpensive, cheap and cheerful, as we like to say. And you could probably get a good 10 scrapbook layouts or art journal pages out of one packet of thickers. So um, can you use Lindy sprays on them? On the thickers, Gaylene, do you mean? Do you mean on the thickers? Bit of foam tape behind that. Um, look, the thickers, the the, the thicker alphabets are uh, usually a like they've got like a, a plastic coating. Lindy's will, but I I tend to not worry about it too much. I do have some white thickers and white alphabets that I would use and paint with Lindy's. Definitely. Oh, look at that. Foam tape that up there. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a black... Why am I using that? A bit of a black border with a thin pen. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to use those pink fresh gems because it's not sparkly enough. I'm just going to bring it up to camera to show you what we've done so far. Okay. So you can see all of those elements there, tucked in, working from the photo up, okay? Um, this week, a company that I haven't used before called Pink Fresh, I mean, I have, I've had their stuff before, but Pink Fresh have bought out these, I need them all, little gems. Can we just take a moment to talk about the packaging? because that's what we do. Fluoro, yellow, uh, gold, silver. I'll bring them up to camera in a sec so you can see their awesomeness up close. And then I'll get them out and show you. So they're little packs of gems. How how can you not want them all is my question. So does it tell me how many is in a packet? No, but I'm going to say an absolute truckload. So we've got ballet slipper, silver, ocean breeze, glacier, lavender, Sapphire, Sunshine, Gold, I love those, Stargazer, Sky Blue, oh, Ballet Slipper again, and Bubblegum. So the colours are just divine. They're $8.50 each, and the packaging alone has, has just won me over. And the other thing that I have got is the biggest container of sequins of all of the sizes ever. Look at that. So, I don't know, there's a, a ton of, of sequins in this pack. So, um, I love using sequins. I use them a lot on other um, projects. So, I'm going today to use, I'm going to use, I've got a little packet of the Glacier ones open, but I'm thinking 
now in hindsight that maybe I need a different colour. Maybe I need the black ones. No. Maybe I need the gold ones. I'm pretty sure. No. We'll go with this one. All right, how would you put these on? I would very carefully, I would do a dob of glue. So I've got the Spellbinders glaze glue that I've been using here and I'm just gonna do a puddle on my table. Grab one, dip it, place it. And these have got the most beautiful shine on them. And I don't want to, as I've got to resist the urge to over. I need a little pickup tool. I did have one, but I gifted it to, or well, I sold mine off to a customer because she wanted it more than I needed it. And of course I need it now. But I have some more coming in. Yep, there's a good spot. That one just dropped there. So the other thing I want to uh, suggest is invest in a good pair of tweezers. I have got like a million pairs of tweezers uh, in the tools section on the website because tweezers need to be a staple item in your collection in your tools so no matter what you always have to have a good pair of tweezers i have got um about six pairs of tweezers floating around they all have different purposes and that is why on the in the tools section you will find lots and lots and lots of different styles of tweezers okay so i could go on Oh, that's an uneven number on that side, isn't it? That's terrible. Um, yeah, and Karen, there are lots of different colours in these bags. So they're not sequins. They're kind of like these little um, diamonds, upside down diamond thingies. It's not the technical term, but you know what I mean. What do they call them? They call them, if you did a search on the website... For Pink Fresh Jewels or Pink Fresh, they will come up straight away. But you just, you can't not. But yeah, there's about six or eight different sizes in the packet. There we go. And look at that. Zip. All right, finishing off. Black Doodle pen mark all the way around. And then I'll bring it up to camera to show you the details and we are done. So just as I finish up, guys, um, we are looking at today only Lindy's products are 15% off. So sprays and magicals and other like magical sets as well. They are all 15% off and embossing powders. Okay, so there's a great range of embossing powders as well online, as well as stamps and stencils and dyes and papers. I'm giving it to you for next to nothing, not to mention the Art by Marlene products that are on special in the Show Specials tab. And there's some Dilusions. Uh, there was some more, like there was some Tim Holtz stamps and there's a couple of kits that have been marked down by 10 bucks. All right, and don't forget about the no judgment postage. So the no judgment postage gives you the um, opportunity to build on your orders. So you'll have $12.50 for your first order. Postage is not free, but we can add your orders and put them all together for the low, low price of one cent. So you need to make sure you pay postage at least once. So I'm going to take a photo of this project pop it up online, link the products that I have used and um, hopefully, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And I have got one more live Facebook to do 
in an hour's time at 3.30 and I'm going to be doing an art journal page using rice paper. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Thanks for tuning in, guys.